All right. So today I am going to be doing something that's very different. And that's going to be uh, regarding to African-Americans in the anthropology field. Now, I did a video about an African-American that's an archaeologist. And let me give me one moment. Let me see. What was her name? All right, so the person I did a video about who was an uh, archaeologist, her name was Teresa A. Singleton. All right, that's an African-American archaeologist. I want to solely focus on the anthropologist, which uh, in the anthropology field, this anthropology deals with the study of humanity as a whole. Now, there's very branches various branches of anthropology. You got the biology version, you got the social social version of anthropology, you got the cultural aspect of anthropology, but it all deals with humanity. You know what I'm saying? So anthropology is a very broad field. Um, it gets deep into like the evolution, the genetics, the culture, the behavior, all those aspects all combined into one. Um, and so that's why I decided to do something different because I think that it's important for us as a people to really get into the study about the uh, African diaspora people who are in these fields of study and it's actually doing the work and it's actually giving uh, not only anthropological research but also historical research as well regarding to African descended people and the human population as a whole. So the two that I want to talk about um, yeah, the two that I want to talk about tonight or today is, uh, Fatima Jackson, Dr. Fatima Jackson, and also Dr. Michael Blakely. All right. So both of them are anthropologists and I'm just going to uh, share some information on them. All right. So I got some of their articles and sources. But let's go into the biography. Let's start with Dr. Fatima Jackson. So who is Dr. Fatima Jackson? All right, so according to information, Dr. Fatima was born uh, Fatima Linda Color Jackson, and she's an American biologist and anthropologist. Uh, she is a professor of biology at Howard University and director of its Cobb Research Laboratory. So she was raised in Denver, Colorado. Her mother was from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, her father was a mechanic who died when she was six years old. One of her great grandmother was descended from the Chetal people and was an herbalist. She attended elementary school, junior high school and high school which were predominantly African-American. After high school, she attended the University of Colorado. She transferred to Cornell University. However, where she earned her BA, Columbia, with distinction in all subjects, MA and PhD from Cornell University, she trained in human biology. Both she and her husband, Robert Jackson, spent years performing research in Africa. All right, so her career in 1981, she became an assistant professor at the University of California, Berkeley, in its Department of Anthropology before moving to the University of Florida in 1986. As associate professor, she became Professor Armatera of Applied Biological Anthropology at the University of Maryland after teaching there for 20 years from 1990 to 2011, which was recognized by a distinguished Scholar Teacher Award in 1995. In 2009, Jackson held a professorship and director role 
in biological anthropology at the University of North Carolina at Chap Chapel Hill. She became a professor of biology and director of the W. Montagod Cobb Research Laboratory at Howard University in 2013. Jackson served as director of UNC's Institute of African American Research from 2009 to 2011. She serves now as the director and curator of the W. Montagod Cobb Research Lab. Her research on peoples of recent African descent also led to the appearance of the PBS programs African American Lives and Novia and the BBC's Motherland. All right. So, and then it goes on to talk about her research. She specializes in the study of human plant coevolution and anthropological genetics, especially African American humans, genetics and population, biological substructures, and people of African descent. For example, genetic changes in human evolution due to cultural migrations. Another example is the influence of phytochemicals on human metabolic effects. She has also conducted work in gene environment, interaction, and chronic disease. At the Cobb Research Lab, Jackson conduct, conducts studies on African-American biological history with access to the large collection of African-American skeletal and dental remains in the world. Jackson has published in many scientific and scholastic journals, including human biology, biochemical medicine, uh, metabolic Biology, American Journal of Human Biology, and Journal of the National Medical Association. Okay. In 2008, Jackson published a paper using the method of ethnogenetic layer for analysis of health disparities across microethnic groups, the current use of racial models for analysis of variance, variation in disease may fail to capture medically relevant information. EL relies on computational, uh, computational approaches by using GIS facilitated maps to produce geographical regional profiles, which are used to better understand disease risk. Some incorporated information includes local historical uh, demography, genetic diversity, cultural patterns, and specific chronic disease risks, such dietary and Tessicological exposure. All right, so it goes on to talk about her honors. Uh, she won the Nick Norgan Award in 2009 for the best article published in Annals of Human Biology. She was awarded the Ernest E. Jess Prize in Medical and Public Health Research by Avery Research Institute of College of Charleston and Medical University of South Carolina in 2012 as its first recipient. In 2017, she received the STEM Woman Research of the Year from Howard University. That same year, she received the Outstanding Service Award from the Department of Biology at Howard University. In 2020, Jackson was awarded the Charles R. Darwin Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Association of Physical Anthropologists. She is the first African-American woman to receive this award. She also has been a Fulbright Senior Fellow. Okay, she is an observing Muslim. She converted when she was in graduate school at Cornell University. Uh, at age 19, she married Robert Jackson, now a professor of nutrition. They met at the Fatima Transfer Colleges to Cornell University. They have six children. So here's the information at the bottom of the page, the references to find out more information about Dr. Fatima Jackson. And also, you can look at the links down here. So there's various links. Okay, most of them are YouTube. So she got the one about the practice of freedom and justice, uh, epigenetics and poverty, reconciling past injustice, building a future in African American genomics, scholar chairs interview, global. Global Blackness, Dr. Fatima Searching for a Meaningful African-American Muslim Disclosure. 
And then this one comes from the Jewish Museum Berlin, God, Darwin, Evolution, Lecture Series, Science and Faith in Judaism and Islam, works by or about uh, Fatima Jackson in Libraries of World Cat Catalog. All right. So these are the information that can be found. Um, that's Dr. Fatima Jackson. Uh, African American. That's an anthropologist, a great anthropologist at that. Yeah, she a great anthropologist. So I, uh, I strongly recommend people to check her out. As a matter of fact. I would like to show you guys a picture of her. All right, so that's a picture of Dr. Fatima Jackson. Okay. All right, and so the next person that I'm going to go to is Dr. Michael Blakely. So here's the information about Dr. Michael Blakely. All right, Dr. Michael Blakely, an anthropologist. So Michael Blakely is an American anthropologist who specializes in physical anthropology and is connection to the history of African Americans. Since 2001, he has been a national endowment for the humanities professor at the College of William and Mary, where he directs the Institute for Historical Biology. Previous, previously, he was a professor at Howard University and curator of Howard University Montagod Cobb a month ago, I don't know how you pronounce the name, Biological Anthropology Laboratory. So early life and education, excuse me, Blakely obtained his BA in anthropology from Howard University in 1978 and MA in 1980 and PhD in 1985 from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. He served as president of the Association of Black Anthropologists from 1987 to 1989. Okay. So the Amer the African burial ground in Manhattan, this is what he was known for. Uh, Blakely was the director of research for the New York African Burial Ground Project. Now the African Burial Ground National Monument, according to Blakely, the existence of this burial ground in what is now Lower Manhattan, where between 10 and 20,000 of 20,000 people of African descent were buried in the 18th century was evidence of false historical representation and exposed as a myth the idea that New York and the Northern states were not slave owning areas. Blakely said that in general, educated Americans had the impression that slavery played little role in the development of the Northern American colonies in general and New York City in particular. Blakely's research helps dispel those myths and offer a compelling portrait of the exploitation and violence suffered by enslaved Africans and equally to the active resistance of people of African descent to this exploitation and violence. Blakely concluded that these slaves face brutal working condition, premature rates of morality and excessive workloads while nutritional deficiency were common among young children. Of the 400 sets of remains uncovered. Blakely's research team examined 24, I mean, 27 skeletons that had filled a culturally modified teeth, which was considered a strong indication of African birth. 
Previously, only nine such skeletons had been discovered in the Americas. It is likely that these individuals had come to New York pre previous to 1808 when the importation of slaves from Africa was banned. Blakely's team examined more than 1.5 million artifacts discovered at the site, which included everything from pottery and glassware to tools and children's toys. His research determined that approximately half of the African people buried at the site were children. After his research was completed, the skeletal remains were re-entered at the site in 400 hand-carved mahogany coffins in, 2000, in a 2003 ceremony described as joyous and bitter all at once. Analysis of racism. Blakely says that physical anthropology has a pattern of denial about racism, which has its origin in the dominant view that social differences are due to the inherent characteristics of individual and less on political and economic factors. Blakely maintains that the history of physical anthropology has been sterilized, downplaying the role that eugenics and scientific racism had in its origins. Discussing a museum exhibit about race, the Science Museum of Virginia blankly criticized the contemporary reluctance to discuss racism, maintaining that it has become illegitimate to talk about racism and that failing to do so is the new racism. Facts. Failing to do so is the new racism. Anyways, now here is the references at the bottom of the page where you uh, the information can be found and then in the external link Blakely on New York burial ground project uh, Blakely interview on National Public Radio in 2007 African burial ground national Mo monument all right so there you go what's up what's up what's up Mr. Chris Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris, what's going on with you these days? I see you still doing your thing. I see you. I see you. Shout out to you, Chris. Shout out to your brother, Chris. Thank you for coming through. All right. So I just want to uh, record this video to um, give information about anthropology. Um, I also have some other sources, but, you know, I'm not going to really go into all those sources anyhow but yeah i just wanted people to like get more actively involved into like looking into the african-americans anthropologists that are really like studying african-american history and not just giving i mean from its origin from the root to now i mean especially dr fatima jackson and oh I forgot something. Let me show who is Dr. Michael Blakely is. All right, so that's Dr. Michael Blake Blakely. Anyways, these two individuals can be found on YouTube. Um, just type in their name, Dr. Michael L. Blakely and Dr. Fatima Jackson. Okay, the anthropologist. So her work is magnificent. Um, She's a great scholar. I mean, not a scholar, but a great anthropologist. They both are. But like when I say if you really want to get into the biology and the genetics, I will strongly recommend her information. I recommend both of them. So to all those out there, if you're watching or if you're going to watch it, 
if you guys that are that's in the African center community and that's uh, really into the evolution, I would recommend you guys to look up Dr. Fatima Jackson and Dr. Michael Blakely. All right. And there's more to come. OK, there's more to come. But for right now, check out these two, because these two individuals are very powerful people. Um, so the name is Dr. Fatima Jackson, Dr. Michael Blakely. All right. Let's see. Now, I'm going to try to see if there's any books. Because I always like to recommend books as well. So let me find some books on here. All right, so one of the books that I recommend is uh, The African Burial Ground in New York City, Memory, Spirituality, and Space, where uh, both Dr. Michael L. Blakely and Dr. Fatima Jackson is in this book. They uh, have their, of course, they have their own little session, you know, their little essay in this book. So it goes into the origin about the excavation and that took place in New York at the time. So this was around the time in the 90s. So around the 90s, they did an excavation in lower Manhattan area, and they found all these skeletal remains of African descended people. So that itself tells the story about, and these skeletal remains go back during the time of the transatlantic slave trade took place okay so that goes to show you the story about how slavery is tied and connected in the north just based off those skeletal remains alone i always say this genetics a science and history goes hand in hand you can't have history without science and you can't have science without history because when you're dealing with the origins, you have to tell the stories based off those origins. But anyways, um, that's all I have for right now. Um, I will be back later on to do another video about another anthropologist. And just be on the lookout for that. So anyways, but that's it. And um, I hope everybody have a good one and take it easy. All right. Peace.